when you don't realize that you're a part of that why, then you're searching for what you already have. Yeah. I mean, that's so powerful. You put words to a feeling that I've been discovering in myself. And it's this idea that, you know, from that place of faith, there is no, there, there is no fear. Welcome to the Name Your Number show presented by the Investor Mindset. My name is Stephen Pesavento, and I'm grateful to have David Meltzer in the studio today. How are you doing today, David? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. Man, I'm excited to talk to you. You've been somebody I've looked up to, to a long time. We worked together. You uh, were a great coach and mentor, and uh, you've been a great digital mentor. And the purpose of naming your number is to setting that line in the stand to deciding what you want from your life and what it's going to take financially to get there. And I want to talk about something that I'm going through right now. And I wanted to get your, your take on it and talk about some of your experience related to it. And that what I'm experiencing is this conflicting two sides of the same coin and wanting to understand how I can actually merge these two pieces together. Because, you know, I know at the core that the purpose that I'm here, the reason that I exist is to make an impact and to help other people and to be able to help others discover what their gifts are and figure out how to create a great life. And yet I run a business that the core sole focus is to make money, you know, the private equity, real estate, investing. And so as I'm focused on impact, I'm being drawn back in to that feeling of needing to create safety and security for people. And what I want to know, David, is, you know, what have you dealt with in your own life that's similar and how have you been able to balance? Because I think you do it so well that going for impact, creating from that place first while having money follow in a close second. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. First, I think it's a mindset, uh, which is a difficult one to shift as far as the paradigm goes from what I call a zero sum game where you give to receive or if I give, I'm at a lesser position to a value add world. And the differentiator between a zero sum game and a value add world is people in a zero sum game appreciate what they have. They add value uh, to what they have, uh, and then they acknowledge it by giving it away, uh, even though acknowledgement can only happen by not having what you have. That's the only way you can acquire true knowledge of what you had is by not having it anymore. So that would be inclusive of not just giving it away, but losing it, having it stolen, manipulated, or even cheated from you. They all uh, will give you acknowledgement. Uh, and in a zero sum game, people continue to appreciate and acknowledge, appreciate and acknowledge. And they feel guilty uh, if they uh, receive or they feel guilty uh, for you know making money uh, because they want to have this impact of appreciation and acknowledgement. But the truth is, if I can shift people's mindset, heart set, and handset, from not just appreciating and acknowledging, but to live in a value add world where faith is backed with actions and activities, that there's more than enough of everything for everyone. So there's no guilt or fear about making a lot of money first, because you cannot give more with less. And if you truly wanna have impact, then you better have more to have more impact. So not only should you appreciate or add value to what you have, not only certainly should you live in a world of acknowledgement, trying to learn the lessons, the light, the love in all circumstances, events, peoples, and ideas and experiences, but you need to ask for more and realize that when we ask for more, when we take, when we receive, we are living in a value add world. And the proof that I know of is when so many people ask me for help or ask me for things, that is when I'm at my best self. That's when I feel the greatest. Not when I'm giving, but when I'm giving to others because they asked me, not when uh, in the inverse that I'm just giving without asking. It, it, it's counterintuitive. So I want people to understand appreciation, acknowledgement, and the value add of receiving because giving, receiving, and witnessing giving, receiving are really the same 
in a value add world. There's no trade, negotiation, quid pro quo, no losers and winners, just all winners in a world of more than enough. Yeah, and it's it feels so much better when you're operating from that place, when you're truly operating from a place of win-win, when it's about you know giving and knowing that that you're doing it from that place yet it's so easy to get drawn back into that scarcity drawn back away from the abundance drawn back into i got to get mine or i got to protect mine or or that place of control and i know you know you've experienced some great financial wins you've had some huge financial losses and you've had some incredible lessons and i feel like those lessons have been the wisdom that you've been passing down to many people along the way how do you approach business today and how does that change how has that changed since when you got started or before some of these massive uh, experiences happened for you yeah well you know i used to attach my emotions to an outcome uh which created not only resistance but it also uh helped me uh caused me never to be happy because i was always i'll be happy when and mm. when never came, even though mm. the circumstances and the outcomes came and changed. And so number one was to shift my perspective to enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential, not enjoying the outcomes of my pursuit. Uh, and then the second thing that I did is I changed my daily practices uh, to really rely on the dependent variable of time. So what do I mean by that? That I take every day as its own individual uh, activity. And I utilize the past, the infinite past that I have, which is inclusive of successes and failures, defining moments, historical relevances, void shortages and obstacles, losses, manipulations, et cetera. And instead of being punished or creating limitations from my past, I actually take the time to align the meaning, the lessons, the light, and the love of my past, successes and failures, to a trajectory of where I think I want to be in the future or better. And once I have the meaning of the past aligned with the trajectory of where I think I want to be in the future or better, I now can chart out a plan of daily activities, activities I have planned, unplanned and sleep, paid for and unpaid for activities that are relegated by number one, what is it I want today, personally, experientially, giving and receiving wise, aligned with the meaning and the trajectory of where I think I wanna be or better? Who can I help and who can help me in that alignment? And then utilizing lenses of productivity to provide value, accessibility to be accessible to others and receive to access what i want and the lens of gratitude to align that meaning of the light the love and the lessons to give me the perspective of how i'm going to get what i want and help who i can and understand who can help me see once i know my what my who and my how i can prioritize what's important to me in the trajectory of where I think I want to be or better and make sure it's aligned with the meaning of my past. And once I prioritize things, I now know my now, my next. I now have the antidote to procrastination and feeling overwhelmed. So instead of searching for what I want, who I can help, who can help me and how to get it done, I'm applying my why, not searching for it. So mm. all I have to do is now do what I want that's important to me, subset of urgency, and then do what's next. And if something should happen that's unplanned, I then reprioritize instantaneously, applying my why, staying in spirit inspired. So instead of trying to get more happy, more healthy, more wealthy, more worthy, I simply am happy, healthy, wealthy, worthy. And I'm constantly trying to figure out what I'm doing to interfere with it. Yeah, that's such a powerful, that's such a powerful lesson, this idea that you already are. And living from that place, living from the enough, the health, the wealth, all those things, it puts you in a place to then start actually attracting those things in. And I know it talks a lot about that in the course of miracles. And I know that's been a big guidance for you. Um, you talked about something, applying your why, not searching for it. 
And I feel like so many people are searching for their why. I know when I started out, I was in a place where you know, I thought my why was to make money. And then I started getting into it and I had some money and I realized that there had to be something greater. There had to be something more than that. And on that journey, I've discovered a lot of things that have made a huge impact for me. And, you know, diving in spiritually, connecting to, to source, to spirit, to whatever you want to call it. And then letting that come out through me. For you, Dave, how have you actually gone about applying not only applying it, but how did you discover what your purpose is? Because I feel like from my perspective, you're clearly giving, you're clearly focused on adding value. You're clearly focused on making a difference in the world. And it comes through authentically. And I think so many people are searching for that part of themselves. I'd love it if you've share a little bit about what that was that you discovered in yourself to know that. Well, it's faith and faith comes from a peculiar space for me because I see faith as gratitude of the future. If you're fully grateful for a future of the unknown with the idea that there's something bigger than you, this omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source, this abundant, infinite, unified system of thought that we belong to, and that that something which is bigger than you loves you more than your mom, you now have gratitude of the future, knowing that just like your mom, except for this mom or mother or God or Jesus, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, Buddha, whatever you believe in, it knows everything. So it's going to protect you at all times, just like your mom. It's going to promote you at all times, just like your mom. And although at times we seem to be punished, just like our mom seemed to have punished us when she was protecting and promoting us, but it seemed like punishment when we tried to touch a hot stove or you know, we were doing something that could harm us. We then have this faith. And this faith to me, Stephen, is so uh, peculiar in the respect that people ask me, well, how do you have such deep faith that you're giving all the time authentically? And, the, you know, and I, I say, look, almost all the time, I spend minutes and moments in greed and offense and guilt and you know manipulate all the areas because i'm human fear i call it fear but how do i do it it's based off of a best option premise i challenge everyone out there in your audience if you can tell me something better to believe in than something bigger than me that knows everything and protects and promotes me and loves me more than my mom i'll believe in it but i've talked to <laughs> literally hundreds of thousands of people and not one person i still waiting for the phone to ring for someone to give me something to have better gratitude of the future of faith in. And that is the cornerstone of everything I do because it shifts the paradigm of, I don't have to search for a why. I'm part of a unified system that's abundant mm -hmm. and infinite and I'm protected and promoted in that. So all I have to do is apply what, what I'm connected to, protected with, promoted from, and remember, recollect and remind with that. And I am so much better off. And it is a practice, Stephen. It's not something that you do overnight. I practice it every day. I went from spending days, weeks, months, and years interfering with that faith. And now I spend minutes and moments, like I told you previously, interfering with it. But that's where the applying the why comes from, is when you're part of the why, you can apply it. When you don't realize that you're a part of that why, then you're searching for what you already have. Yeah, I mean, that's so powerful. You put words to a feeling that I've been discovering in myself. And it's this idea that, you know, from that place of faith, there is no there, there is no fear there. You, you already are safe and secure. So you don't have to go and do anything. You don't have to push for something. It's already it's already within you. And you feel like you can then apply the thing that you were meant to be here to apply. And it seems like it removes so much of what limits people. Yeah, it really does. Because remember, we can never overachieve our own self-image. And if our self-image is based off of separation, inferiority and superiority, a need to be offended, separate, guilty, resentful, angry, worried, what do you think your self-image is going to be? Limiting in nature. But mm -hmm. what if your self-image was part and parcel of a unified, abundant, infinite system, omniscient, all-powerful system 
that's a pretty big self-image. Now you can achieve so, so much more without limiting it with fear. And so I'm actually in a practice at all time, like I said, identifying what I'm doing to interfere, F-E-A-R, F-E-A-R, with what I'm doing. So I know there's only fear of the past and fear of the future. Once I identify what am I actually afraid of when I'm angry, worried, guilty, resentful, offended, separate, inferior, superior, whatever it may be, then I go a step farther and say, hey, I know I'm afraid of the past in this scenario because I resent something because of the past. Now, what ego-based consciousness am I prescribing? What interference am I prescribing to that fear? Oh, I have a need to be angry. I have a need to project an insecurity. I have a need to be separate. I have a need to be not worthy, all right? All these different things. Now, instead of having to resist it, go over it, under it, through it, around it, I simply can stop, and that's where we remind, remember, and recollect of the unified system of thought that we're a part of, and we roll in the right trajectory of where we want to be or better instead of in the wrong trajectory of what's missing, what we don't have, or what other people want from us. Yeah, and it's from that place of resistance that we actually prevent ourselves from becoming or living or doing any of the things that we actually want to do in our life. And... Uh, yet it's such a habit uh, that is so hard to break for so many people, even people like myself, who, who does the work, who, who meditates every day, who, who journals, who reflects, who goes through the, the process that we talk about when it comes to naming your number, uh, yet it can still be challenging to persist through consistently, as you say, every single day. What do you recommend to people when it comes to stepping into a new version of themselves, stepping into that life that they want to create and, and actually making it a consistent action that, that they do, that they feel, that they know inside. Yeah, well, one, you have to have time as a dependent variable of all of the matter, subjective and objective matter in our life, and then utilize that to reconcile it with your values. So if I'm utilizing time to say, how much of my time am I spending in gratitude, learning the light, the love, and the lessons, having the right perspective, doing the right things, having the right behavior, knowing that money, time, space, behaviors are all energies that aggregate, compound exponentially and greater results and accelerates the results as well. Then I can also utilize forgiveness or empathy in order to effectuate the flow or the ease to identify when I'm at disease. And when I'm at disease, I then use accountability to figure out, okay, how am I responsible? How did I retract this to myself? And what perception am I participating in so that I can learn how to dissolve, dissipate, or disappear that interference, that dis-ease? And then finally, reconnect, remember, remind, and recollect with the inspiration to live and apply the why. So gratitude, empathy, accountability, effective communication derives the in spirit, the inspiration that allows us to be in the flow, allows us to live at ease and dissipate and dissolve the disease, which will create much more abundance so that we make more money, help more people and are happy, have more fun with all the activities in the day to enjoy the consistent every day. See, if we're enjoying it, it's easy to do every mm -hmm. day. It's easy not to quit every day. It's easy to do our best learn lessons and have fun to pursue our best, our potential. If things are difficult every day, all the time, it gets tiresome. And we start uh, building on the interference instead of dissipating and dissolving it. Yeah. And and that's that's the key. It's almost like that's that's the message that your body's sending to yourself or your spirit or whatever you believe. It's sending that message saying, hey, you're out of alignment. You're doing something that you don't want to do, which is creating the resistance, which is making you tired, which is making you not feel good, not happy, not fulfilled, which is actually pulling you farther and farther away from what you are actually going for. And so when you say these things, it's like people know them in their core, but they're not actually applying them. And so I hope that this conversation today has been a beautiful reminder for so many, because when you talk about it, Dave, you make it so simple. And that's one thing that I've really loved about your message and your content 
who do you look up to and who have you learned from over the years to be able to uh, take this part of you, this authentic part and be able to share this and be able to really make a huge impact in the world? And what advice would you give to those who are listening, who want to do something in life that's bigger than themselves? I think they're all uh, reconciled together with those questions is one, I've always had uh, for the last 17 years, at least three mentors, people that sit in a situation that you want to be in, which is why mm -hmm. I do so much mentoring for free. I've been doing free Friday trainings for almost 24 years now. Uh, we have over 86,000 people registered for our free Friday trainings. Uh, I give my books away for free. But I've had some great mentors along the way as well. I've had a sleep mentor because that's a third of my life. I know very few people that pay attention or give intention to sleep. I maximize that experience that so many people ignore. Most people go to bed at night, wake up more tired the next day. They live their lives like tubes, food in, food out. Mm. Uh, for me, I've always had a sleep mentor. I've had great mentors like Bob Proctor and Sadhguru and Master Shah, Deepak Chopra, Jack Canfield, John Asaroff, and the list will go on and on and on and, uh, of people who have mentored me, Dr. Wayne Dyer, uh, incredible mentors uh, that have changed my life and have facilitated uh, the acceleration, aggregation, and growth that I've experienced. And that's why I offer uh, the same thing to everyone as well. In fact, for your community, I'd love to uh, send my book out to everyone. I'll pay for the book. I'll pay for shipping. I will pay. Uh, I'll sign it for you. Uh, so, you know, just email me, david at dmelzer.com. All the exercises, guides, books, free Friday trainings, everything I can do for you. So uh, please reach out. And uh, the, the best piece of advice, a few things. One, you talk about, I try to make things as simple as possible, but I want to give another lesson within the context of simple things, like saying thank you before you go to bed or when you wake up like being kind to your future self by doing good deeds. These are simple pieces of advice, but remember the simple things to do are unfortunately simple not to do. So raise your awareness to the simple things that have the most impact, the non-negotiables of your life. Raise your awareness to the simplicity and you'll have a better statistical success, making sure the simple things to do are also simple to do Unfortunately, don't make them simple not to do. Please email me, everyone, david at dmelzer.com. I'll sign a book, send it to you, pay for the book and shipping for your whole community. Reach out to me. I'm happy to be of service or value. Great to see your success, Stephen. I look forward to doing more with you. Yeah, the conversation that we're having is super important. And the reason that it's so important is because when we focus on going out and finding that path towards creating that recurring revenue, that passive income, that money that's going to come in to fuel the life that we want, it really all starts with naming your number. It starts with drawing that line in the sand, deciding how much you're going to need, what that life's going to look like, and then, of course, creating a plan to get there. But the reason that today's conversation is so critical towards that path of naming your number is you've got to get in alignment with what it is that you want to create from your life and then take the lessons that you learn along the way and apply those so that you can become the best person that you're meant to be. Uh, Dave, thanks so much for being with us here today. I really appreciate you. you've been an incredible mentor over the years. Love learning from you. I hope uh, all of the listeners will take you up on the opportunity to get a free book or any of your free lessons and guides. And definitely I look forward to the next time we get to spend some time together. You got it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Investor Mindset Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share with a friend. Head over to the InvestorMindset.com to join the Insider Club, where we share tools and strategies from the top investors and entrepreneurs on how to take it to the next level. 